So I want. Uh, so I have good, let's say, morning or afternoon, whatever. But I'm really happy to talk and uh, continue s another small country. <laughs> so it's a small country. So I'm moving ahead. So I have to, first of all, I want to make sure that you all know where Estonia is. It's a small country here. It's, and because otherwise, you know, sometimes we are here and sometimes here. But, <laughs> but um, this is three Baltic, small Baltic countries. And we are the northern one close to the Finland, which is over here. So healthcare, we have one medical university, one uh, single payer for healthcare. And this year budget is about 1 million euros. One million and pays for healthcare. No education, no research. Um, from um, last week, January first, exome sequencing is reimbursed by this system. And in order to get your test into the system, you have to apply in January now, and it takes a year for them to evaluate the thing, and then you get your code and price. And price in our case is fifteen hundred uh, per genome per exome, and they accept trios. Also, they, if you have one patient and parents, they pay all three. So this is um, a thing about exome sequencing. So what I'm talking is that medical genetics, this is a newborn screening, microarrays, this is going on, and you know, exome sequencing, most recently, it's all covered. But I'm going to talk about the medical geno uh, genomics, uh, and this is a common and complex disease. So first of all, we started about um, 14 years ago, year 2000, biobanking laws was adopted in Estonia, and we started a biobank. It took um, many years, you know, 2010, we had a biobank, 5% of Estonian adult people <coughs> were in the biobank, and we used this for research. We are publishing a small place, we have a biocenter, the genome center has 40 people, and we are publishing like 30, 40 papers per year now because we have this um, resource. And of course, in, the, in addition to the biobank, we build up the sequencing and genotyping, and uh, also I have a good team of bioinformaticians, statisticians. So, uh, main thing is that we have Estonian uh, biobanking, Estonian Human Genes Research Act, which is a law. And it tells that we have to use uh, results in order to improve the public health. So it's by law we have to do it. <coughs> so, this is how people are actually reacting. When we started the biobank, you know, we had lots of people who didn't know anything yet, and so still don't know too much about the biobanking. But, you know, there are lots of people who uh, actually support uh, genomic medicine, support biobanking, and genetic research. Always people who basically are against it. And uh, this is also normal, you know. I know that some people you offer color TV and they refuse. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, um, we did, uh, like everybody else in Europe, did a PC map, and so you know, Estonians over here. So next to, next to Latvians, Lithuanians, Poles, and Russians from north western part. Finns over here, and Kusama, which is a famous isolate, is over here. The rest of Europe is here. Swedes are here. So this is, tells us that we are pretty close to the rest of Europe, but still I have to look some specific areas. Not so many like in Finland. We know that Finns have their own diseases even, which we don't have. So then, I just to tell that our biobank is available for research, everybody can get access. You have to go through, uh, or we together have to go through ethical committee and scientific committee, and we can send samples and data all over the world, if approved. And, um, Okay, so it tells that uh, the next thing, now we have a biobank, we can do research, we know a little bit already about the population, and we know what is going on. So next thing, what uh, is kind of needed in order to do genomic medicine for complex diseases, which is for the full population, we need e-health um, solutions. And everybody has, in our country, so-called ID card. And as you see, we have active cards at 1.2 million, and we have uh, about 70,000 people don't still have this card for different reasons. And this is now, in addition to this one, we have also it's a mobile ID. So from my mobile phone, I can do all what is uh, needed. I can do bank transfer, I can go to my health records, whatever you can do, you can use a mobile ID also. So it tells you that in Estonia, we have. Um, all databases like here, 
So prescription database, all uh, prescription are digital, all are recorded. So we have a um, national health information system. Uh, we have uh, digital images on everybody, and you can access this database from everywhere. So everything is connected with so-called X-Road, which is a secure way to connect different databases, and, and uh, even Finns now actually <laughs> took this over, and Helsing is Sanomats are a major newspaper road. It's really a shame to accept something from Estonia, but uh, it's nothing to do, because they have been doing it for so long and still couldn't do better. So we have a so-called um, national with a personal key infrastructure, which means that everyone can access and give a digital signature, which is legally binding, uh, using your phone or, or ID card. And what is good is that over 10 years, nothing happened, no misuse, and uh, people are very um, trustful and using this. Banks are closing offices because nobody's going to bank anymore. So this is a national patient portal, which everybody can access. And you know, this is of course Estonian here, but this is my data, and, and here you can sign, if you have accidents, you can donate your organs to somebody, you can make an um, application here, vaccination, so on. Here we just would like to add one box, which is just genetic data. And I tell you what, uh, how we are going to get this data. Oh, this is last slide telling that uh, by OECD, Estonians are really good putting health uh, information into the net. But what is missing is, is um, decision support, which is very small here. And, and this almost every country this is small, because what we need is we need a diagnostic support software, decision support software. So do we have inform enough information? So we, I don't have to explain you know, what uh, she was, but, um, but um, combining several markers, I still believe that we can do some, can use this information in some useful way. So let's take uh, this, we, we, all information here is coming from Biobank. We have a chart that um, all this, let's say type two diabetes patients here, and we have 20,000 arrays done. So we have you know, information. And you see that if we just plot the patients according to the genetic risk, so you, you see this a certain number of patients have higher risk than others. And if you just uh, take uh, its more simple way, you, you see that actually the genetic, of course, BMI is important, but genetic uh, information is also important. You see how much risk is increasing if you have a high genetic risk, let's say top 20%. So I guess this is the uh, most um, uh, telling figure. So if you are young, let's say 25 <laughs> or 30, and um, your BMI is 25, and you are not in the risk group, because in our country, if you are 40 years old and uh, your BMI is 25, uh, above 25, then you are in risk group, and GP should do something. But they can't do, because there's too many of them. And uh, they have tons of other things to do also. So this type of analysis actually can restrict the number, or they can focus. And if they focus for 20%, it's already probably the preventive measures are more kind of uh, uh, fruitful also. So if you are young here and, and you are high genetic risk, so if your BMI goes up or you just keep it low, you get it here. So it probably five times difference in, uh, in uh, this. And so if you're young, I, I tell you, it's much easier to keep your BMI lower than to reduce it when you have it already 35 or close to 35 like I do. So I tell you, this is some, this is something uh, useful what we can do. Okay, the rock curves don't tell you much also because you, they are almost the same, but still better if you use the genetic information. But again, genetic information is known already day number one. So BMI is going when you're already going on. Glucose tolerance test is already too late. You already have a pre-disease. So this is now a slide I borrowed from Marcos Porola. <laughs> and you see, if you just uh, take the myocardial infarction, and usually they have uh, certain numbers of 20% uh, risk, so they will, will be treated like normally. But then the ones which below screen here, if you analyze this extra 
genetically, you still find out certain number of patients which can be treated. And according to the Finnish data, which is coming from FinRisk, so they can prevent 135 deaths in 10 years. So per year is 13, but this is only 400,000. In Estonia, we have 1.2 million, 1 million. So almost every third day, somebody is dying from myocardial infarction because they are not tested. So um, these are not our data. I just have to tell this is finished data. So what I, um, I proposed um, to the government um, plan that how to use the uh, resource what we have and the information from the power bank and how to really use uh, genetics in, um, in public health. As the law is selling, uh, telling, you have to use information in order to improve the public health. So I, I thought that let's do the pilot project first and sequence 5,000 people in order to get all the haplotypes and variants up to down to the 0.1%. And, uh, and then use this information to build a new array with Illumina. Let's say add 200,000 markers to the existing uh, 700 uh, uh, SNP chip and to everybody on the in the biobank. We know the information, health information on these people in the biobank. We know all events what happened after they were recruited because we got all the information back from the different databases, including hospital databases. So we can actually analyze the data, what do we see from the arrays and what are the actually the real clinical picture. And put everything into this HEAL system and physicians, GPs can use it or whoever can access the patients own the data. In our country, patients own the data. And uh, they can tell who can actually get access. And they also can make access to research. So if this would be, of course, we discussed it uh, through uh, many uh, organizations, including the Parliamental Social Committee. But um, then we decided, let's do the pilot first and put everything into e-health and people are using. And then, Main project would go, at, we offer this test for everybody 35 to 65, and we did a survey, and about 75 to 80 percent would like to have it. And uh, so we have like 500,000 people in the database who is, who is in e-health database, so what is the only database. And basically we have uh, genotypes, we have a family structure, and we have prescription database, we have images, and it's updated daily, basically hourly. And so now, can you imagine, we have a database, half a million people, you see somebody's getting drug, and after one month is buying the same drug, or actually after one week happened to be in hospital, and, and so on. You can something, you can see like from an airplane on the town, you can actually follow the system. This can be used, I guess, both way for research and also for the a real um, prediction. So type 2 diabetes or glaucoma, glaucoma is very easy. You, with few markers, you can get the risk and you just send to the eye doctor say measure your eyeball pressure. We have 28,000 people blind because of glaucoma. So on. So basically, this is the most important thing. Because we have only 10 medical genetists in the country. There's no way that we can offer genetic counseling to everyone. So physicians and GP primary care provider have to learn a little bit more, but basically we have to do everything. So chip analysis has to be in in uh, automated way in this software. And when GP is opening the computer, just have probably three lines. If glaucoma risk is high, go to eye doctor. Your your warfarin risk is warfarin metabolism very low. You just have to uh, go into the basically it has to go into the prescription database mm -hmm. that when doctors <laughs> are prescribing says is that they have to look for the dogs, and so on. Not so many things, and not very complicated. Then computer can land a plane in the, with 500 people in the fog. So computer can also help GP doing this decision. Okay, so, so basically what happens, we have a kind of circle, and we just Im improve the database, we learn, we just uh, make the database better, we get better results, and this is a circle that already somebody was showing it before. I guess uh, um, Dr. Rodan. So, we, um, uh, so survey, uh, PC is actually very interested in this, and patients are actually the main drivers because patients are even more interested in this, so they would like to use it. Of course, we have challenges. Um, hospital directors are against it because they have to change their life. 
So not say so you have to follow probably thousands of these uh, pre-diabetic patients instead of doing some brain surgery. And uh, of course, we don't have enough knowledge, but we always learn and uh, lots of things to do. But in small country like Estonia, this can be a test set because we need one positive case, one positive example how things can work. And with this one million people, I guess um, we can do it. So basically, I guess all the prerequisites are in place. And the government uh, decided basically to add some more educational part and, of course, some business part. But this is uh, mostly approved. And um, we have to come up with more detailed plan in, uh, by summer. And in fall, when EU new funding will be open, we are ready to move on. So thank you very much. This is our World University. That was very nice. Reed Piritz, uh, we were talking amongst ourselves and uh, wanted to suggest to you that you market your electronic health record system to the rest of the world. Um, <laughs> my question has to do with the histogram of uh, type 2 diabetes risk that you showed yeah. uh, to the tail of high risk. How many of those individuals would be detected by family history alone? Do you have those data? Um, no, I don't have it here. And um, from the biobank, Family history, I, I, uh, I don't know the data now from my heart. From the rock curve, it should be limited. Right. It's a problem here is, so I tell you what the problem is. Now the problem is that 50% of kids are born a single parent. So father side is gone. This is one thing. And uh, basically, um, I, I, I don't think that family histories are so good that we can really I believe that this is much better because half of family in many cases is gone. Yes? Yes, Mark Abramovitz, Brussels. I understand the beautiful opportunity to have a nationwide database, but I have a question about the Estonian gene chip that you devised yeah. with one million chips. I'd like to know how many of, how many of these are uh, validated for clinical use? How do you intend to use them uh, when you mention applications for the patients? We are going to validate to insert pilot phase. <coughs> Uh, Mark Williams uh, Geisinger, a comment on the family history uh, question that Reed brought up, and then a question. Uh, the comment is is that uh, you know, given uh, the infrastructure that you've developed, I think you have the opportunity uh, to systematically collect family history and have that persist in your system, which would allow actually uh, linkage to develop over time, so that you wouldn't necessarily have to rely each time on the patient, you know, providing that information that could be actually um, systematically collected and updated. Dated as, as some have proposed, not the least of which uh, uh, Dr. Ginsburg and the work that he's been doing. Uh, the question I had related to the clinical decision support, um, which I think is, is elegant, uh, what I wanted to know is, uh, do you have then a centralized uh, clinical decision support uh, group that uh, when something uh, is submitted that is approved that is that then automatically pushed out across the entire country or how is that uh, adjudicated? Uh, uh, yeah, there is a kind of task, task force has uh, been discussed. This it will be just one place and uh, like sequencing or genotyping is going to be in one place and we have a genetic testing is one place in hospital, in university hospital, in this country. You know, small place, you know, everything. We don't have to divide everything by two, you know. it's. Just one. <laughs> but, um, but coming back to this family uh, thing, you know, doctors are using family information, all information what we can use today, but the number, the percentage of type 2 diabetes is increasing. So why is not uh, reducing if we're using all the instruments what we have? I believe that we need something additional in order to put the ceiling on this. And I tell you one more thing, if you just give this personal information to people. So people are more likely to change their lifestyle than just put a poster up and lose weight, uh, run more, or eat uh, whatever. So if you tell personally, then it's different. And we did a survey, and it's not yet mm -hmm. published, but uh, Dr. Singh is published, but we see the thing. Of course, it's easy to put a box, you know, tick in the box, but yeah, after one go to run. But uh, I still, there are other data also showing that people are willing to change something if they told personally. 